Welcome to Monet Cafe. I'm artist Susan Jenkins, and this month in Monet Cafe, artists have been enjoying the benefits of tiny painting. I'm calling this when less is more, and there are truly so many benefits to painting small. So come on in the studio and let's paint some lovely tiny geraniums. Oh, and by the way, this is all real time. I'd also really appreciate it if you would take a moment right now to like, subscribe, and hit that little bell icon to be notified of future videos. And I'm able to keep these free lessons coming because of the support from my patrons on my Patreon page. If you would like to consider becoming a patron, it's only $5 a month and you get extra goodies and extra content. And now let's dive right into more tiny painting. I am so blessed to live near the most awesome and beautiful produce market. I live kind of out in the country and pardon the vertical footage here. I film a lot for my Instagram page and it's best to do vertical footage. Um, but anyway, they have jams and jellies and uh, local honey and just all kinds of wonderful plants and produce. And they happen to have some absolutely beautiful geranium blooming and I thought man this would be a great subject matter for some future paintings and yes a tiny painting this is the reference image I'll be using and if you're a patron of mine on my patreon page you will get a copy of this image in the post and now let's talk a little bit about the supplies I'll be using what's called artist trading card size and that size is two and a half inches by three and a half inches and I love using these clear bags to put my little original paintings in. It keeps them very safe. You can ship them as long as you protect them with some foam core board and these make great gifts. Unfortunately, this little pre-cut card you see here by Color Fix isn't available anymore but you can cut your own all you need to do is cut something that's two and a half inches by three and a half inches and now I'm going to put my little card on the board and some of you have asked how I do this and it's really a simple method I get a piece of artist tape and yes this is a nice sanded surface uh, pastel paintings uh, we love sanded surfaces even though you don't have to have sanded surfaces to work with pastel but I take a piece of artist tape I put it on the back and this is really easy because it's so small and I leave a little bit sticking out of the top and here I'm going to show my limb tape dispenser this is so handy for me because I used artist tape all the time uh, I use three quarter inch artist tape I get from Dick Blick and my limb tape dispenser I got from Amazon I do have it in my Amazon shop I'll try to remember to put a link to that I always have my shop in the description of each video but I'll try to put a link to the dispenser it keeps me hands-free now all I do is take another piece of artist tape and stick it you know halfway onto the tape and halfway onto the board so it's a super simple method to where you can paint to the edges of a painting if you want you don't have to you know uh, go around the perimeter of your painting with tape but first I'd like to discuss this reference image and what I'm going to do to paint it small I've printed out my reference image a lot larger than my painting is going to be just for a, a teaching opportunity and to share with you what I think is a great benefit of tiny painting now typically when we're painting large we're looking at all this detail we're looking at all these little leaves on the ground and all of this and when you're painting on such a tiny surface there's no way you can fit all that detail in there you know your big old chunky pastels won't do that so you end up achieving the goal that I hear from a lot of you. You want to get more painterly, a more impressionistic style, and that's what small painting does. It forces you to stay loose. You cannot get in all of those details. So that's definitely one of the benefits. But I'm going to show you too kind of how I'm going to simplify this for the tiny painting. All right, so I can see here, this is like some other pots in the background back here. Guess what? I don't care that those are pots. It doesn't matter. I really like the color, the color contrast going on with these pink flowers. So I think for the background of this, instead of worrying about it being a pot, I think I'm just going to um, kind of, uh, and I'll lose this little thing here, kind of get some nice color in in the background of these. Um, there's also a nice kind of blue green going on there. So rather than, which will kind of tie in with some of the blue greens in here. So rather than over analyzing things, we're gonna simplify it because we're painting small. There's no way we can get all that detail in. Let me get a nice blue green. Um, all right, yeah, it's kind of like something like this, which might look a little bit like the sky. You know, we can, we can pull out our artistic license and just 
um, imagine things being different. So I'm going to really subdue um, the background a lot. One of the first things I already know I'm going to do. And I'm going to do the same thing um, on the ground. Now, what would you say, and, and this is my strategy here, is to make certain things stand out more than others. And that's what's uh, called focal point. And we definitely want our focal point to be these flowers and these leaves in the pot, okay? But I'm going to even simplify or fine tune it even more than that. I really want the focal point to pull the viewer in, look at color and beauty, and maybe bring their eye up here. I'm probably going to pull my pot down a little bit so that my flower is not so close to the edge up there. All right, so I'm going to subdue other areas, giving little bits of detail where I want my focal point energy to be. And here I'm just sort of blocking in some darker shapes and simplifying things a bit. So most of the rest of it is just going to be um, choosing a few things that you want to be your focal point. Like I said, it's obviously going to be these flowers here. And I wanna to try to keep um, the gesture of them. Often, creating flowers are, and, uh, and leaves that are a little bit more geometric is, is kind of interesting rather than, you know, all real curvy lines. But I like, I like the way we've got a little flow going. I love the position of the flowers. I also like kind of how certain leaves could kind of pull like in an S-shaped curve here. So I, I will probably enhance the contrast, and there's only so much I can do with a little painting. Uh, maybe a little bit of the contrast here. This is a darker leaf because it's underneath shadow. Uh, and a few leaves I'm going to give a little bit more attention than others. And the rest can be a little bit more subdued. Um, I usually try to keep things subdued when they're close to the edges. And keep... Now I'm gonna keep this here <laughs> just as a reference, but... Uh, I'm going to share with you another tip why painting small is a good idea. And it's because when we take an image like this and we shrink it down to a thumbnail. Now, see, it's big now. Um, I got all kinds of pictures here. I, pre I prefer to paint from something often as a thumbnail because you're not allowed to see, or you can't see all the detail. It doesn't allow you, I should say, to see all of the detail. So um, it really helps to even look at the image small while you're painting. But I'm gonna use this one as a reference and I'm gonna look at this one also while I paint as well. And here I'm just using a white charcoal pencil to get in the sketch, which is super, super simple. Now this is the only part of this video that will be sped up. And also my reference image was wider than my painting surface. So I do kind of um, accommodate for that, shrink things in. I had to bring the flowers in a little closer to each other. And this is super simple. Uh, we're just gonna get in a pot, a few of the flowers, a general shape of some of the leaves. Kind of think big shapes with this. Don't think too much detail. We just want a little bit of a roadmap with our sketch and that's all we need. Now look at that big old chunky, oh, in my dirty hands, Terry Ludwig pastel. I know many people probably think how on earth are you going to paint with big pastels like this on such a small surface? Well, believe it or not, that is point one in why small painting is huge in benefits. Well, we recommend often, like when you're painting with paintbrushes, I always say use the largest brush you can for the initial stages. And that's because we wanna block in, we wanna focus on the big shapes. And because you're painting small with large pastels, you can't help but focus on the big shapes. I mean, there you can't really get in too many details. So it's a really great way to simplify and get in the big shapes for blocking in. Now, I've just added the dark that I had at first was a Terry Ludwig. Oh, I can't remember what this pastel is, but it is a lighter, a little bit lighter orange. And I'm not going to get too fussy or carried away, but I typically work dark to light. You can layer with pastels. So I loved this pretty... Um, kind of a purple magenta color and I believe I, I think this might be a Sennelier pastel I'm not sure uh, and I know if you're brand new first getting started you don't have a lot of pastels to work with trust me I feel your pain I was there with you it's taken me years to accumulate lots of pastels but here now I'm adding this is definitely a Sennelier pastel I am adding a bright pink 
Now notice how the colors start to kind of vibrate. And all I'm doing, I can't focus on individual, you know how a geranium has all kinds of little flowers that make up one big flower? They look like little bouquets. I can't focus on all of that. All I can do is kind of scumble in some of the colors and the shapes. And that is a key to the painterly look. I have artists often asking, how do you get an impressionistic style or a painterly style? And often it's by these little techniques of just layering color, suggesting things rather than getting too overly detailed. And that would be point number two. It lends towards a painterly feel. Uh, now I'm adding a little bit, it had a little bit of a warmth to it in some areas where the sun was hitting it. So this is a little bit of a warmer pink or a cool red, you could call it. Um, I know some, if you're brand new, you may not understand the color temperature. I do have a, uh, I think is a really good video on color temperature. And it's, it's to me, I'm fascinated with color. Now, here's back to the point number one, which we have to block in big shapes. I didn't want to get too fussy with color right now. I just wanted to get in some value. I wanted to get in kind of like a middle value here. I love this kind of cool, sagey blue green and see how I'm just getting in the general mass of the leaves, the shape of the whole uh, area of the leaves rather than leaves individually. I can't tell you how many times early on, and I still do, that's why I always come back to small painting because it helps me to remember to block things in, but I can't tell you how many times I go in and I start painting the leaves, all of the little leaves before I ever block anything in. Uh, now I'm just reshaping the pot a little bit. And now I'm still in the block in stage. I've got me a nice neutral, it's almost like a brown, gray brown, uh, it's got a little coolness to it as well, but I'm just blocking in the ground shape. I know that I can come back and layer in other colors. Also, a light touch. You see how the paper's still showing through? Well, that's because I have a super light touch that has taken me years to figure out and to do. And I now I do it by habit. But that is something that I recommend always. Keep a light touch. And I know early as artist, it bothers us kind of to see all of that texture showing through the paper. But don't fret. Just embrace it. Let it be because eventually the pastels start to layer themselves. Now I know there is a little bit of a light area behind the uh, geraniums. You can see that the, the ground is darker under the pot. And then gradually as you go up to the middle part, it starts to get a little bit lighter. And, um, and, and then eventually the higher up you go, it gets cooler. There's a little coolness to the background. Um, so now I'm just kind of scumbling in uh, the little shapes. Another benefit about tiny painting is you don't worry so much about the final result. You don't freak out over it. It's a little piece of paper. You're not out that much if it doesn't work, even though you can repurpose these papers. So you kind of have a little bit more of a carefree, relaxed attitude. Another point is it's less expensive. Of course, you're using less product. Another benefit is this is great for busy lives. Can I get a hallelujah? I mean, most of us have very busy lives and you can feel like you accomplished something and uh, it was relatively fast. So I find that's a huge benefit. Plus, it is absolutely true that daily painting is the key to becoming a better artist. Paint every day. Now, I know sometimes that doesn't work, but if you paint small like this, your odds of painting every day are a lot better. Um, so that is a, another great benefit. And it's so satisfying. You really feel like you accomplished something. All right, let me talk a little bit more about what I'm doing here. I know that the leaves that are on the lower side, they're a little bit in shadow. They're going to be cooler. That's why I use kind of some of those uh, teal cooler colors. And now the leaves that are on top, are catching the sunlight so I've gone warmer now I'm not going with my lightest value yet notice I'm still working dark to light or middle value to light not a nothing's really dark except for the um, part under the pot which is going to be lightened up by the way but now see how once again I'm going back to my other point which is I can't focus a whole lot on the detail of these leaves all I'm doing is looking at shapes I've scumbled in or I've blocked in I should say the big shape then I've honed it in a little bit with some of the cool leaves and now I'm getting some of the warmth and a little bit of those shapes. Now I knew there was some neat little blooms kind of coming out from the bottom of some of these. You know how some of the blooms shoot up and they still have those little um, 
pods. Um, so I just hinted at that. Uh, now I'm going, uh, I think I, I changed my mind a little bit on some of these colors. Uh, no, this one, this one was good. I'm just giving a, a few, like on the little edges. I love how geranium leaves are curly and it had some where the edges were curling up where there was a little bit more light in certain areas. So I'm just suggesting that's the word you want to embrace with small painting, really with big painting too. There are, with a larger painting, of course, you can get in more detail, but you still just wanna overall suggest things and have a very limited area of where your focal point is. Um, just popping in, that color I thought was a little bit too light. Now, here's where it's gonna start getting some depth. Um, notice I didn't put in my darkest dark color because I, at first when I blocked it in, because I wanted to come back in and strategically, um, sort of negatively paint, um, into the shapes inside of the leaves. And I think that's what creates the depth and makes it feel like there is three dimensional, uh, a three dimensional quality to the leaves and the plant in general. Uh, now I wanted to add some of that beautiful teal on top of the other uh, blue that I had added. And now I'm coming in with a little bit more of a, a little, maybe a little more periwinkle blue. And I'm just kind of negatively painting um, in between the flowers, the spaces between. That would be a good title for a video, talking about negative painting, the space between. Um, and so see how the colors eventually are starting to blend themselves. And I actually like a little bit of the paper showing through, um, but as you paint, you don't have quite as much of that. Now, I went with a little bit of a darker value uh, as I'm negatively doing, uh, they call this when you do trees, sky holes, but why would if I have used a darker value in some of these little places in here? Well, it's because when you get down um, with, say, the sky, I, I made this kind of like a sky behind it. When you get down into the plant and the sky is peeking through, it's going to look very artificial if you use a very light value. So I usually go just a hint darker uh, with those negative spaces. Now, I love adding a little bit of purple in the shadow. I'm uh, sort of carving out the pot a little bit more. Also, too, I don't freak out with getting my pot and some of my things just exactly right because I know that I can carve, I can shape things as I go. Now, this is a beautiful little neutral purple. I love this color. I believe this is a Sennelier pastel. Sometimes it's hard to tell because I've used these pastels a lot and uh, they kind of get worn down a little bit. Um, but my strokes are going to just almost be forced to have a painterly feel because we are so forced on using uh, bigger shapes and broader strokes. Now I'm peeking in some of the darker into the part of the pot that would be shadowy. You can kind of see it in the reference image. There's areas that are a little bit darker. Um, there is a little hint of light um, peeking through this cool little section. I haven't gotten to that yet. Um, on the bottom left of the pot, just above that one leaf that's poking down. I, I add that highlight later. And now I'm getting in a few more little darks just to indicate uh, where those dark spaces are in the leaves. And a great way to find those areas is to squint your eyes. Look at the reference image and just look at the shape of the dark elements. And then you can sneak those in. Now that, that I thought it was a little bit too light. So I went back to something a little bit darker and uh, just dabbed it in a little bit. Now I'm doing my suggesting again. Once again, I cannot get all of these little bouquet flowers on one uh, flower head. So I just got me now my, my lighter pink. It's kind of like a... Um, almost a little coral colored pink. And I'm just dotting in where some of the light would catch little, those little individual flowers just a bit. Um, now I wanted to cool off a little bit behind there. So I got a pretty neutral blue. It's like a gray blue, isn't that a pretty color? And I'm just dabbing color here and there. I like to connect my painting with color. And because I had a little bit of blue in the sky, I wanted to bring that down, but not go quite as light. Uh, now I'm using a little bit of that purple just to layer lightly, lightly over um, the darker area. Now you see how that layering works now? And it starts to uh, uh, basically fill up all those blank spaces of paper showing through. Now here's where I'm adding that lighter color. Well, it was <laughs> before I picked up this green. And I'm going to use it again, like I said, for a little highlight. Now I put in a little uh, stem. These do have a few stems. There's not a lot. Um, and I'm going in, I want to zoom in here. The pastels you see me using now 
are Prismacolor New Pastels. They are great for line work. They're a little bit harder. And uh, because this painting is so small, I was able to use these more effectively to get some of those little curly Q edges. I think that's so emblematic of a geranium. So just giving a few little suggestions of those curls in certain spaces. Um, is a lot of fun and makes it really look like a geranium. A few other little pops of dark and um, I too wanted to bring a little bit of that terracotta color into the ground. Plus the ground was kind of warm with a lot of leaves on it. So you see how it's all kind of layering and having that really painterly impressionistic feel. And now I'm almost done a few other little touches and it's only been you know less than 20 minutes. Um, the video right now is 20 minutes at this point but I talked a lot at the beginning of it also. Now peeking in a few of these pretty teal blues and notice how the shapes are kind of large and I really think that adds to just a few little elements of interest, just some fun shapes in there. Like I was saying early on in this video, one thing I love about painting small is it makes such neat little gifts. I love giving my tiny paintings away and they're also fun to collect, even your own. I love putting them up on easels and seeing all my little tiny paintings all together. They're just so darn cute. By the way, I have heard you guys in the comments. Many of you have been requesting more watercolor tutorials and yes, I'm going to do the same geraniums larger in watercolor so that's going to be coming very soon and lots more watercolor too all right this is it for my little tiny painting and i have more on the way now if you're a patron of mine you guys have been doing an amazing job with the tiny paintings you've totally embraced it believe it or not i have more on the way this is probably going to be the next tiny painting a little beach scene this is one i did an experiment with metallic watercolor and iridescent pastels and i also repurposed a piece Piece of UART paper uh, that was a painting I wasn't happy and I'm going to show you how you can repurpose it and do another little type of tiny painting that's a bit more abstract and just fun with color. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you're a patron of mine, I can't wait to see what you do in our homework album. We have lots of fun. So if you'd like to support this channel and become a patron, I would love that. Please subscribe and also follow me on Instagram. I'm trying to build my Instagram following at Susan Jenkins Artist. All right, artist, be blessed and happy painting. Thank you.